guys, this is Q&A number two for Top Chef Canada season seven. I made it past uh, episode two. I survived. So as I posted you, um, a thing for you guys to give me your questions about this episode, a lot of things happened, a lot of things didn't happen. So uh, before we even get started on this Q&A, quick little shout out, uh, rocking the little Imperial Lux. Imperial Lux, they sent me a couple of things here. These guys, small little company from Ottawa, just on startup. They do some really high quality stuff. They've also given some giveaways for my viewing party coming this Monday for episode three. So shout out to those guys right there. And then obviously you see here, I got a little bit of Rosewood Winery. These guys are also from, um, from Ontario. They're from Beamsville, local guys, family run family. Uh, family run company, sorry, not family run family, but family run company. These guys are amazing. Will, Roman, the whole team. Um, I'm drinking of their their mead. I don't have a wine glass. Don't at me. Same sort of thing. They're really, really good. I love these guys. Um, they're one of the first wineries that I met when I was a young guy in culinary school up in Waterloo. And we were doing a cooking competition, and their bees was their bees and their honey and their mead was the secret ingredient. So that's how I met these guys. So yep, cool. Let's do this episode two. So much stuff happened, and a lot of questions. But I know there's one main one that everybody's asking. So I'm gonna answer that, and that is what the hell happened to my breakfast? Did I even cook breakfast? People are like, did you hurt yourself? What happened? Well. The answer is simply this. I did cook breakfast. I cooked a pretty damn good one. Um, I was kind of upset that I wasn't on, but it's totally understandable because this is episode two. There's, what is it? Uh, 11 chefs. 11 chefs. It's a lot of content, a lot of things to edit, but I'm going to sort of describe my breakfast. So what I ended up making was uh, oatmeal. And for me, Oatmeal was breakfast because that's what I grew up on. That's what, when I was a fat kid, my family wanted me to eat because it was healthy. You know, my doctor told me to eat it. And then I personally chose to make it a savory one because that's what my grandfather did. This was like inspired by him. Uh, he taught me how to make savory oatmeal, so I did that. So the whole dish as a whole was savory oatmeal. It was flavored with a lot of mushrooms and herbs. And then I had a little bit of bacon, onion, scallion, jam. I had some sourdough bread croutons, a little bit of oil, a chili oil. And then I had a poached egg that I, um, not poached egg, a soft boiled egg. So it's still runny inside. And then I crusted it, pancoed it, and I deep fried it um, so that it wasn't almost runny when you break it open, but it was just enough, almost like a ramen, ramen yolk so that the reason whole behind that one was that I didn't want the yolk to be so runny that it caused the whole oatmeal to be this sort of mushy, slimy thing. So it was a little more cooked through. And yeah, so that was my dish. That was my breakfast. I did make it. Um, who else? Um, Max, Max, Phil, and Tanya. Their, their dishes didn't get shown too, but it's okay, you know. Uh, the reason behind it is they showed the best dishes. They showed the worst dishes. Um, so yeah, that was it to answer that question. That is what I made for breakfast. Um, really wish you guys got to see it cause I busted my ass for that one. I totally remember what happened where I needed to, the eggs were the ones that were killing me. I needed what f I needed four eggs, but I ended up making almost 16 of them because a always back up, but B the shell kept on breaking. Um, and sticking to the eggs so then it had these little divots or the egg would break and I was just scrambling to get those um, eggs done. That was like the big part of that dish. Um, but yeah, I can say whatever I want. No one's going to see it. It's okay. I'm sure they have footage. Maybe they'll, sh maybe they'll send it to me and I can send it to you guys. So without further ado, that's out of the way. Now let's get down to the questions. Um, I'm going to start off with Facebook. Um, Let's see here. Um, ben asked, compared to when I did Chopped or when I did Top Chef, which one's more pressure? I answered this last time in the Q&A, um, the first Q&A, and the answer was Top Chef Canada is definitely, definitely way more pressure because it's the best of the best. Um, Steve Chan, he said, what did you make for the breakfast in bed? Yep, just answer that. Once again, savory oatmeal with uh, fried soft boiled egg, sourdough croutons, 
as well as a bacon, onion, scallion, jam. Uh, Matthew Kinnan, when are you going to win a challenge? <sighs> I know, right? Um, it's episode two. There's been, what is it, four challenges, three challenges, haven't won any, but I've been on the top. Um, what's the saying? Bridesmaid, never the bride. So, <sighs> it's coming, hopefully. Hopefully I get to win one. Um, Tan. Question was... Breakfast meal, da da da, cool. I answered that. Was it too much food porn that they couldn't air it on Food Network? Thousand percent. Way too much food porn. Eleven chefs making tons of food. That's the deal. Uh, Maggie says, how the hell did you think of the Mexican inspired dish? So, that dish was, simply put, the, the whole challenge was make a dish that was an in-flight meal by, that would be served on Air Transat, and then you had to reimagine it and then make it into an order of a one biter for about 100 guests. And how that came to be was when I thought of flights, I thought of vacations. When I thought of vacations, I thought of all-inclusive vacations. And I thought of Mexico right after that. And I personally have never gone to an all-inclusive, so this was sort of a cool play for me. And my in-flight meal was a play on chicken al pastor. So al pastor is a Mexican technique or style where it's pretty much anything that's marinated in spices, um, some vinegar, chilies, and then pineapple. Um, so then what else did I do? And then I did a little bit of salted pineapple on the side for, for a little side dish, as well as a tomato, onion, um, salad. So that was all served also on a little bit of bed of polenta. So polenta is made out of corn and that was what the inspiration was from for the al pastor because usually chicken al pastor is served on a taco. So the taco shell is made out of corn, the corn, polenta, and that was the dish. And then from there I took it and spun it and became my hors d'oeuvre by making uh, a maso harina fry cake. So I took, maso harina is really just a cornmeal and cook it almost basically like grits or polenta, fried it so it's nice and crispy on the outside. I took some grilled chicken thighs and I've grilled that and marinated it with all those spices and with citrus flavors, pineapple, uh, charred tomatoes, um, peppers, chipotle, and then pulled that and then had a little pineapple lime gel for some sweetness, a little pickled shallots because every, ta uh, every taco needs some sort of uh, acidity and then some micro cilantro and then just to play in that Mexican Spanish realm, I took a little bit of manchego cheese and grated that all on top. So that was my dish. So that's my inspiration. All inclusive vacation, Mexico, tequila. Yep. All right, VV Mac. Um, once again, oh, oh, oops, I thought she was gonna ask about breakfast, but it wasn't. She asked, um, when am I gonna cook her a meal? I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Um, I don't know. Andy Liu, watching the remind, did you participate in the quick fire? I did. Um, I see you in the kitchen, but I didn't see you appear for the breakfast. Yep, answer that. Um, sorry if I'm being a little repetitive, guys. Sandy, uh, Sandy Anderson asks, is there an ingredient you cannot live without in your kitchen? That's going to be easy salt. Salt is like the most basic um, ingredient anybody can use. It can season, it can cook, it can marinate, it adds flavor, it can contrast flavor. So answer to that, salt. Who's your biggest inspiration behind all the meals you come up with? Um, there's no one individual person. So for me when I cook, I'm inspired by whatever that for instance, on Top Chef would be the challenge. So whatever the challenge is, I'm inspired by something based on that challenge. If it was at something at home, um, I'm inspired by what was at the market or what I'm hungry for. Um, so yeah, there's no real person. What was the best and the worst moment for you on the show so far? Um, best moment on the show so far was definitely both times so far being top four, being called out, um, and having the best dishes, one of the best dishes of the challenges. Worst moment so far is a thousand percent going out and standing in front of the judges. Doesn't matter because you don't know if they're gonna call the best dishes out or the worst dishes out. They've changed in many seasons before. I've seen it happen. Um, so I don't get my hopes up every time I'm out in front of them. All those judges, they're all just looking at you with these evil eyes and you're like, are they gonna rip me apart or whatnot? So that's my worst scary moment. Um, Jenny Tai, um, who won last time, so thanks again. 
hope you enjoy your shirt. It says, when they announced the next challenge about recreating an airline meal, given your lack of experience with traveling, how intimidating or nerve-wracking was that? And how did you overcome that feeling? Um, let's see. It was not intimidating or nerve-wracking in regards to the fact of I have to make a meal. It was more of the fact of I was worried that how the seasoning works. Uh, I was thinking because past um, past Top Chef's seasons, whether it was I think Canadian or the U.S. one, they did have one where they had to cook uh, airplane food again. And I remember the chefs were having such trouble because of whether it was like heating things up or um, seasoning because when you eat in altitudes, uh, seasoning is different. So I was just like psyching myself out, worried that, you know, I'd have to cook this meal and they'd have to reheat it and they'd have to eat it as if they were um, in the air. So that was really what I meant by like I was worried of not traveling a lot or not having a lot of uh, airplane meals. So thanks for the question guys on Facebook. Now let's go to Instagram. Um, cool. Tasha asked about breakfast. Answer that one. D Peckham, aka Dennis, aka Sly Guy, aka Mr. Suave on Top Chef Canada. Go check him out. His Instagram is D underscore Peckman. Uh, love the dude. Uh, <laughs> he goes, Hi Wallace, long time listener, first time caller. Why just steal my shirt for all your interviews? I'll hang up and listen. Thank you. So, Obviously, he's busting my balls, but if you can, if you guys watch the show, um, he actually has the same shirt that I, I do, which is the pink, uh, pink just regular t-shirt. Um, to answer that, we both just have style, I guess. Um, Jen Fashion Studio, do they give you, do they give you guys good accommodation and lodging? What do you eat for lunch and dinner? Um, it's TV stuff, right? Um, on TV, we, we're just in a hotel, so that's cool. Nothing's, nothing's wrong with that. Lunch and dinner, we just eat everything that the set, the crew eats, and that's usually catered lunches. And they're all super healthy, always good stuff. Um, I personally really like it. I think uh, film industry guys, they're super, super blessed to have someone cook for them and like feed them like three, four, five times a day. Uh, Rel Kifit. Rel, Rel Kifit? Rel Kifit. Uh, breakfast, answer that. Also, how much do the guide or script you on AB Roll or is it pretty much reality? It is legitimate re reality. So, shooting Top Chef, when you watch anything that's cooking, that's all real. There is no AB Roll or none of that. The only thing that is sort of more set is interviews, just because you're interviewing. But anything cooking, running, shopping, all those things, they're live, it's a reality show. Um, I'm going to definitely butcher this one. Says Pul says Pulak. Um, how do you do those interviews when you describe what you do when you're cooking? Do they have you watch back footage that and describe what you're doing? I've always wondered that, lol. So it's really, um, doesn't matter if it's this Top Chef Canada um, or Chopped or any television show. What happens is they pretty much have everything you've written down, questions and stuff. And then they just go back and they ask you those questions and you answer them. So that's really it. Jam Vung, why do you always wear shorts and Jordans? Good question. And the answer is simple. Jordans cause those are my favorite Jordans. If you watch first episode, second episode, I'm wearing um, Jordan 11 breads. They were my favorite Jordans. Had to wear them. Uh, what other better way to do it? Also want to show my style, um, show my flair as a chef. Um, this also goes with the shorts too. It's because as a chef, there's not much things that we can do to show our personality or characteristics. We're always wearing the same chef coats, chef pants, chef shoes. Um, or So for a chef to sort of differentiate themselves or share their little bit of their personality, socks, the shoes, um, you know, people get tattoos, um, hairstyle, glasses, that's it. So for me, Shorts and Jordans was because I wanted to showcase just my style. I feel um, my, my character, but also because they're comfortable. They're super comfortable, and it's freaking Top Show Canada. I'm going to be running around. I better be able to move in shorts and J's. Simple as that. All right, next question. JJ Who. It seems like contestants always cook more than you need. What happens to the food left over from your challenge? Do you try to 
do you get to try to eat each other's dishes? Simply put, we don't get to try other people's dishes. Um, what happens to the food that's left over? They get thrown away because you can't eat it. Um, but we're, in regards to like say the um, the ingredients in the pantry and all that stuff, Top Chef Canada, they want to make sure that the ingredients are as fresh as possible. Lauren Bailey and the culinary team, they do an amazing job um, constantly just switching out the ingredients every day. And anything that's left over, they actually donate it to Second Harvest. So that's what happens to the food. Um, let's see. Jetty Lee, what did you cook for your breakfast? Answer that. Uh, if you could have, would you have cooked the congee dish again since it's usually breakfast in Asian countries? Um, absolutely not. I wouldn't have co cooked the congee dish. Um, going into Top Chef Canada, I my goal is to always cook something different, show the judges my skills, my techniques. I already cooked um, congee once, so I wasn't going to cook congee again. Um, Fit Chick Nick, what was your initial reaction or thoughts when you were watching the episode and realized your breakfast wasn't aired? I was upset. I actually, when I first watched it, I was watching at a viewing party, and when I didn't see mine, I thought I just missed it. Uh, I didn't know they didn't play it until people asked me where was my uh, breakfast dish. But yeah, I was upset because like I busted my ass, man. I was running around and like getting things going. I was like, oh no, all my eggs are gonna break. I might not make it. Um, but yeah, it's all good. I'd rather that than freaking be on the bottom. Uh, and what would you say your biggest secret or not so secret weapon is? My biggest secret or not so secret weapon is the fact that I don't cook in a restaurant, meaning, um, my style of cooking is I freestyle. I don't really cook with recipes. I sort of just go in, um, and intuitively think of what recipe, what ingredients work with what. Um, Flavor-wise, balancing things, bitter with sweet, salty with um, salty with acidic, etc., etc. And yeah, I really don't have rules. I think that's the biggest one. And also just being confident. That's definitely it. Um, and she's a fan of sneakers attire. Sneakers for the win. Um, Hangry Foodies, what did you make for the breakfast challenge? Answer that. And how many Jordans do you have? I've got two. I can't afford more than that. Uh, I'm not a, I'm freaking not a sneakerhead. I mean, I am, but I'm not. I can't, I stay in my lane. Um, I've got the Jordan 11s and Jordan 12s. Those are the two Jordans I've ever had. Uh, Shoei Poo, can I watch Top Chef Canada online? Yes, you can. Food Network dot, food network dot CA under Top Chef. Uh, there's episodes there. They're going to put them up every the night after the day after it airs online. So you can definitely go watch episode one, episode two, um, episode three, and hopefully I stay on. EDX Teen, my question would be, other than the most obvious, what was your breakfast dish? Um, you, weren't, you weren't confident about making your dish for 100 guests, but after going through that and acing it, what new techniques did you learn and was it hard as you thought it would be? So. The reason why I was nervous about making for a hundred people or like large format is because I my dishes are usually pretty ambitious. They've got a lot of touches. Uh, what we mean by that is that there's got a lot of things and components to plate or to do. And for me, it's worrying of making sure I have the time management right, making sure that I get everything done and it's still at the level of how I cook and represent my style. So that was really what I was worried about. Plus, I was I'm always um, I'm always more so of being over prepared than under prepared. Same thing with food. So the budget, I was worried that I, I might have bought too many, too much stuff, or I wasn't buying enough. That was gonna be, so um, I was gonna run out. I definitely didn't want to run out. So that's why I was nervous about it. And did I learn any new techniques? Um, no, I didn't really learn any new techniques in regards to cooking for the mass. All I learned was just bust my ass and work faster and harder. <laughs> Um, Chef Alex DPD, what up bud, what up chef, when, how, why did you want to become a chef? Um, I don't know, I really don't know when I wanted to become a chef or why I wanted to become a chef, I just sort of became a chef because food was what I grew up on, I worked in my family's uh, takeout Chinese restaurant when I was a kid, so I was just around it all the time, I was just, I was just around it. And for me, 
cooking was a fun way to just remember things of like my family and good memories. So I guess that's why I wanted to become a chef. Hilds89, for episode one, do you make a separate plate for each judge? Um, episode one. Yep, I made, yes, we did. We, I made six, six plates. Um, when the competitors were trying to win a spot, when the three competitors were trying to win a spot, so this is all for episode one, guys. If you haven't seen it, check it out, foodnetwork.ca. Um, if you have, you know what we're talking about. Also, when the three competitors were trying to win a spot, did you all share a plate when judging them? Um, no, so we, yeah, we did. For tasting um, Paul, Alexi, and Bennett's dishes, we all sort of, it was basically a dish between two chefs, so we did share them. It would have been crazy for all three of them to cook, what is it, 11 dishes in 30 minutes? Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard, definitely not possible. I mean, it's possible, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't work. Um, it seems like a lot to adjust something else, oh, uh, Okay, The Claw, why didn't they feature you in the quick fire? Because there's too much content, too many chefs, it, they would rather obviously show the best and the worst versus showing the people that were not too bad, did not in the middle of the pack. So that's why. Um, thought I ha thought you had an accident or something. Nope, I did not. So, but thanks for caring. Thanks for thinking of me. Appreciate that. Uh, Morgan Rose ninety. Who do you think your biggest competitor is in the show? The biggest competitor so far is gonna be freaking Paul. It has to be Paul because he's one, two, or three. Um, that's really it. That's really why. And it's also because all the other chefs sort of hype him up um, and have told a lot of stories about he's this competitor, he's done all these things. Um, so yeah, probably Paul. And what did you make for your breakfast? Answer that. Uh, also, did you vote to have Bennett in the competition? I did. I definitely did vote Bennett in because he had the best dish. All right, guys. That's a wrap. Q&A number two of Top Chef Canada Season 7. Thanks, guys. And once again, shout out Imperial Lux, shout out Rosewood Winery. Um, you can grab Six Pack Chef Tees, a cut above on sixpackchef.com. Thanks for watching and viewing party on Monday. If you guys are in the area, feel free to come by, uh, DM me, message me, give you the information. Until then, guys, Team Wallace, Team Six Pack Chef, let's do this. Thanks for watching. Peace out.